So what's the point of a CSS reset? I was just reading your reply. I was going to respond to you in text form, but I realized this would be a lot better if I did it in video format. Um, CSS resets and CSS normalizers are an incredibly important part of working with um, web design and web development. If you're anything beyond a hobbyist level, you're going to need to make your stuff work in all browsers. So um, right here, it's really obvious to me that you don't have a strong understanding of the deeper levels of how browsers handle CSS stacks. Um, and you also don't understand what the point of a CSS reset is because this example doesn't address the point of a CSS reset. So here you're saying there's an H1, it's got a font size 28 pixels, so therefore it is 28 pixels. And yes, if I go to any browser, that's going to be correct. But what you're not doing is setting all of the other hundreds of properties for an H1, and there are hundreds. Um, and you don't necessarily know which browsers are going to have unique properties in there where they decided as a browser manufacturer I want the top margin for an H1 to be 21.44 pixels for some reason. Thanks Google. Um, and you'll also if you look into this you'll see that pretty much every browser has decided that the top margin for an H1 needs to be its own unique magical number. Um, I don't know why but uh, older versions of Chrome have a different number than newer ones. Chrome is always different than Firefox. Older versions of Firefox have a different top margin for H1 than newer ones. Uh, iOS versions of Safari are different than OS X versions of Safari. Every single time they update IE, they just randomly throw out a number. So uh, H1's top margin is always different. Now, here's a practical use where that would be a problem. Let's say you were designing a page and you have a box on the page. And in that box, it has to have a header and then a paragraph. And this box can't change its height or width. It has to be the specific size due to the layout design of the page. If the box gets any bigger, it'll screw up the whole layout. If, uh, if the text in it doesn't flow properly, it's too big, it doesn't fit in there, then that'll screw up the whole design, right? So that's a, a we'll, we'll say that's the use case here. Um, we've got a box and we put the text in there. If you're not controlling, if you're not doing a reset on this H1, then just that one setting of, of margin top for an H1, it's going to be different in different browsers. And some of them, it will be 14 pixels. Some of them, it'll be 28 pixels. And that's twice the size as other browsers. So that's going to push this stuff down more than you expected and then cause your text to overflow and either spill out of the box or force a scroll bar to appear that you didn't intend and so on. So that has a use case where... Um, you wouldn't realize your page looks terrible in all Android browsers or all iOS browsers. You know, if you didn't test in that platform, you wouldn't have any idea. But the point of a CSS reset is when you do go to test that stuff, it's going to work anyways because it's already been fixed for you because um, it resets all the CSS to look the same in all browsers as your base point when you start working. So from that point on, everything will work the same no matter what. Um, so we'll take your H1 here example because H1 is a really basic and simple. And uh, I'm going to go over to JS Fiddle. Uh, oops. Ah. And type in test. Okay. Oops. Okay. There's my test. I'm going to go down and hit inspect. And there's my H1. There's no custom styles being applied to it. And over here we've got a couple of things set for our CSS. Um, the difference between these gray ones and these uh, not grayed out ones is these top ones here are uh, explicitly being set somewhere, somewhere in the code, a font size of 32 pixels is defined, and down here, the height, you can't find height 37 pixels anywhere. This is being generated because it looked at the font size and the line height and the, the padding and so on, and then said, okay, this needs to be this size, and it figured it out. Um, so that's what the difference is between these two. You notice there's not much going on here, so it's kind of um, a little deceptive. It makes you think that uh, there's not much you'd have to set for this thing, but oh, there's so much. There's there's so much stuff. So if we go to show all, here are all of the CSS properties being assigned to this extremely simple HTML element in H1. It's a very very basic element, and it's got about 200, 300. I don't even know. There's a ton of, of elements in here, of properties, I mean. So it has to have these. Let me explain why all of these are here. If the browser doesn't explicitly set um, the font stretch and font style and font variant and say what these things are, then it has no idea what those need to be. Because at some point, you click run, it's going to need to render the content, the code that was passed to it. It needs to render that on the screen 
visually. It needs to actually paint each pixel onto the screen, and it needs to know certain things. Like if it if you're not ex expressly saying, um, you know, the font size, it doesn't know to do that. It doesn't know that an H1 needs to be that size. You need to actually tell it, make that 32 pixels, or make sure that it's bold. Um, don't make it italic. Um, how far from the top do I have to start painting these pixels? How far over do I need to do it? What color are these pixels? It doesn't know to make it black. It has no idea how to do that unless you explicitly tell it. So every single CSS property that can be applied to it has to be applied by the browser manufacturer. Otherwise, it just simply cannot render that content on the page without huge bugs. So at no point do you ever as a designer sets the styles or define them. All you ever do is override the default styles. That's a really important concept to understand. You will never ever set the styles of something. You will only ever override the browser's defaults. So this is level one. This is the, the first level of the stack for a browser. It starts here with all of these um, properties being defined for you. These are the defaults, that's level one. Level two is your user agent style. This is a style sheet that comes with each browser um, and it has, sometimes it has suggestions like this of properties that are stuff you may wanna alter or edit. Um, other times it just comes blank. Uh, most of the time no one ever touches this, but this is for end users to adjust the their their default settings. So they can, the user has the option to override the default as well um, and then anything that isn't explicitly being set by the website they're going to will fall back onto their stuff. So these override the defaults. And then on top of that is your custom CSS as a designer or a developer uh, that would override the user agent styles. So that's the stack. It goes default, and then above that is user agent, which overrides the default, and above that is custom CSS, which overrides everything below it. So what I'm talking about is what you insert above the user agent on your custom CSS that will reset all these issues. So um, the top margin, for example, uh, in a CSS reset, it would already have that. So if I go over here and click on normalize and then hit run, suddenly my test is going to look a lot different. So this isn't at all what I wanted it to look like. Before, that was a lot closer. Maybe I want to change the font family and that was about it. But now I have this. Now I have to I have to go in here and I have to manually add in a little bit of margin to the side, some margin to the top. I need to change my font size. I need to change my font family, all that stuff to get it looking back to what I wanted. But the point is that um, if I didn't go through and manually set all of that stuff for an H1 and then the, the margin and font size and the padding and the font family, if I didn't go through and set all these properties to make this look the way I wanted after normalize, um, then it's not going to work in all browsers because all I would have set was just the font size, right? In your example, that's all you're setting. And that's not going to get me back to what I wanted. So that's telling you that... It, because I'm using normalize, it's letting me know that uh, if I don't set those other properties, those properties are going to have issues in certain browsers. So um, as you saw with those hundreds of CSS properties, um, checking that against uh, all of the different browsers, and you know, there's about a dozen or so on Windows, there's about uh, half a dozen on OS X, there's about uh, a dozen on, on iOS and about a dozen on, on Android. So there's, you know, 30 or so browsers you really have to worry about if you're going to try and support 99% of what people are using. Um, not even all of browsers, but just 99%. So there's, uh, in that batch, you've got about eight different rendering engines for the different versions of Trident, the different versions of uh, WebKit, Blink, uh, Presto, uh, Gecko, um, Gecko Mobile, uh, et cetera. It's like there, so there's so many different rendering engines, about eight or so, and there's so many different browsers, about 30 or so, that you should be trying to make your stuff work for as a modern web developer. Um, granted, there's only about five browsers you should really be testing heavily in, but like your stuff should work no matter what browser the, the user 
uses. So this is what does that for you. The difference between a reset and a normalize is that a reset just zeroes all these settings out for you. It goes through and zeroes them all out, whereas a normalize is a little bit more opinionated and says, instead of making H1 through H6 all the same font size, I'm going to set it so that H1s are bigger and H6s are smaller. Um, that's the that's the difference between the two. Uh, normalize is more opinionated. Um, the thing is that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all if it's opinionated or not. What matters is that it's overriding the default styles. That's all that matters. Because once it overrides it, that means all browsers will render that property identically. So um, when it, what I would highly recommend is you start off your CSS with the Myers reset because it's a really good reset. It has a really good fringe cases. It catches lots of weird stuff, especially with older browsers. And then you layer on top of that the normalize.css, which is more up to date. It doesn't catch as many fringe cases, but it's really good with mobile browsers and it's always kept up to date. So um, it will overwrite anything that matches the, the Eric Myers resets and uh, it'll be more opinionated. So your stuff will look a little bit closer to what you wanted. Um, but the point is that if you combine both of those, they're going to have a combination of CSS properties that will uh, affect the specific parts that are different between browsers, the discrepancies, and that's what matters. Um, back in the day when uh, I, I had to, before I, I was using this stuff, I would spend three months crafting a website from scratch, the whole thing, designed 100% original, the whole thing without using any frameworks, completely original design. And then after three months of working in one browser, I would then switch over to another browser and see, okay, what's broken now? Because my design looks perfect in Chrome. That's what I made it in, it looks perfect. I'm gonna switch over to, um, to Firefox now and see, oh man, Firefox, everything's broken. So now I have to go through and custom fix issues there. And then when I go and test IE, everything's broken there. And I have to go and fix that stuff. And I go back to Firefox and the things that I had fixed have been broken again because I fixed them in Internet Explorer and that caused issues. And now I have to go back and forth between these two until I find a nice balance where both are working properly. And then I'm done. And I go back to Chrome and everything's broken there. Why, why is everything broken in Chrome? I just fixed it in these two places. And then, so this is, this takes you from, you finish the site in three months and it's completely unique uh, and done and you didn't use any frameworks or anything so you're doing completely original code so it took you several months to complete this project and now it's done and you go and you test and then you have a whole nother month of fixing issues you know uh, or, or if you're really good you have maybe a week of fixing issues so you go from that to if you had just started off with Eric Myers and then on top of that uh, the normalize then you do your whole three months and you get to the end, you go and do your, your testing and you've got about 20 minutes of bugs to fix. That's it. Like, oh my God, everything's, everything works magically. So that's the, that's the power of these things. That's why you need to be using them because browsers are all unique and weird and stupid. And so this just resets everything back to normal. And if you're thinking, well, I don't want to do that. That'll increase my code base. This is it. Here you go. This is my resets. Uh, this is normalize together. This is about, 2.8 kilobytes, which when it gets g zips goes down even smaller to like less than a kilobyte. It's it's nothing. Uh, this wouldn't even impact you if you were targeting GSM flip phones in Africa. It wouldn't. And even then, if you were targeting that international market with older, uh, weird flip phone browsers, you're going to need this stuff. You're going to need these resets. It'll make your life so much better. Uh, so there's no use case where you wouldn't want to put this small chunk of code at the top of your CSS. Like there's never going to be a point where this won't benefit you. Uh, so just freaking do it. Save yourself so much time and effort and stop being a hobbyist and become a freaking professional and make that money and make cool websites that, that actually work in uh, Internet Explorer. And uh, then you can tell it to people and they'll be impressed. They'll be like, whoa, it works in IE? And you're like, yeah, only 11. I didn't test the other ones because I'm lazy. So anyways, that's why CSS resets and normalize are important, why you need to be doing them. So yeah, do it.